next topic is revaluation. So there are two things. One is called depreciate and one is and, and one is called appreciate. Depreciate means reduction in value. Appreciate means increase in value. So there are some assets. So, so most of the assets, they depreciate, most of the assets. Furniture and fixture, computer equipment, plant and machinery, they usually decrease in value. Motor vehicles, they all usually decrease in value. But there is a possibility that you may have some assets which increase in value with time. And most common examples are properties. For example, some office building uh, or some other factory building. So these assets, they increase in value. It is, I mean, quite common sense that imagine that you purchased a house like say 10 years ago for 100,000. And you cannot say that after 10 years, it is still 100,000. After 10 years, there is a big possibility that the value of the house has gone up. So if the value of the house has gone up, you must revalue it. You must determine the new value because if you show it on your balance sheet still at 100,000 after 10 years, it's not a fair presentation. You cannot convince your shareholders or you should not tell your shareholders that this property is 100,000. It was 100,000 10 years ago, but not today. So that's why because of the fair uh, presentation concept, you, we must uh, revalue the assets and that is called revaluation. So usually when we use the word revaluation, we means an upward increase in the value of the asset, upward increase. So you have two choices, either you keep the asset at cost. So actually IFRS allows you to uh, use two of the policies. It is your accounting policy, either to show the asset at cost. Cost means the purchase price, I mean the initial cost minus the accumulated depreciation or revaluing to a fair value. Fair value means kind of market value. Uh, the better thing is you do it at fair value because fair value, it may give a better perspective. Yes, it is true that sometimes some assets are so insignificant, so small that we go for the cost model or sometimes it is difficult to determine the fair value or the market value. So therefore we use the cost model. So IFRS allows you to use cost model, but the better way, the suggested way is to use the fair value and especially for significant non-current assets. So Im imagine that you've got some piece of furniture. You don't need to do the fair value of furniture. It can go with cost model. You talk about your piece of computer. Uh, you talk about your printers or I mean uh, IT equipment, cost model will work. But if you are talking about a house or a premises or a building or a factory, which is a significant big asset and uh, where the changes could be material. So in that case, revaluation should be done. Fair value should be determined. And IFRS suggests that all the significant assets, they must be revalued at the end of every year. So how do we do revaluation? Let's see it in the next slide. So a revaluation is recorded as follows. You say debit the non-current asset, which means that there is an increase in the value of non-current asset and that increase you, you, you charge. So you see the revalued amount less the original cost, original cost, not the net book value. And I will show it uh, with the help of an example actually, you will understand it better. So just see the entry and we will come back to this double entry again. So debit non-current asset, debit accumulated depreciation and credit revaluation surplus. I will explain this uh, double entry in the next slide. Here you can just remember, but please remember that this is a very important double entry, debit accumulated depreciation, debit non-current asset and credit revaluation surplus. Revaluation surplus is that gain in the asset. So when is revaluation done? So an entity may choose to revalue its assets rather than hold them at cost. This is a choice of accounting policy where an entity revalues, it must revalue all assets in the same class and the depreciation charge is based on the revalued amount. So it means that if you decide to uh, conduct a revaluation uh, process on some of the asset, then you must uh, do revaluation for all of the assets within the same class. For, so for example, if I uh, believe that the property prices have gone up and I must do the revaluation on my property, then I should do revaluation for all of the all of the buildings, not the one building or, or the two buildings. Whatever properties I have, the entire class will be revalued. And after revaluation, uh, you will start charging depreciation on the new cost or on the new value because now you've got a different value in the balance sheet. So let's see this revaluation question. And uh, after doing this question, you will understand in more detail uh, the double entry of revaluation as well. 
So let's suppose that an entity purchased an asset for $100,000 with a useful life of 20 years. So in this case, we have not mentioned the residual value. So you can assume that, re that residual value is zero. And we have also not given you any depreciation method. So by default, you should take straight line method. You should only use reducing balance method when they ask you to use reducing value, re uh, reducing balance. Otherwise, you will always take straight line method. So we say that straight line method with uh, residual value zero. So it means that $100,000 worth of asset will become zero in 20 years. So how much is my depreciation? So 100,000, the cost minus the residual value, which is zero divided by 20. So it means that my depreciation per year is 5,000. So it means that the asset is going to lose $5,000 value every year. So from 100,000, it will become 95,000, 90,000, 85,000, 80,000. And that's how it will become zero in 20 years. At the beginning of the seventh year, it was established that the fair value of the asset for was 120,000. So now after using the asset for six years, after using the asset for six years, at the beginning of the seventh year, so seventh year has not yet finished, just the beginning of the seventh year, you realize that the market value of the asset was 120,000. So it is way up or way different than your balance sheet value. So required, number one, calculate the revaluation gain. Number two, record the revaluation gain. Record means the double entry. Number three, calculate the extra depreciation, which means the depreciation after the revaluation. And number four, show the revaluation account at the end of the year. So these are the four things which we need to calculate. So let's do it together one by one. Number one, okay, so number one is calculate the revaluation gain. So revaluation gain will be the difference between the net book value of the on the balance sheet and the fair value or the market value. So if you uh, remember that the asset was 100,000 and the depreciation was 5,000, so it means the annual depreciation was 5,000 and it said that at the beginning of the seventh year, which means that six years have passed. So you need to calculate six years depreciation. So six year depreciation was six times 5,000 30,000. So our depreciation is 30,000 for the period of six years. So it means that your net book value is 70,000. So it means that the asset you purchase for 100,000 and at the end of the sixth year or at the beginning of the seventh year in your balance sheet, the net book value of the asset is 70,000. So your books, they say that asset is 70,000 and in the market, the asset is 120,000. Now there is a difference. 70,000, your, your balance sheet shows the value of asset as 70K and the market value of the asset is 120K. So it means that there is a difference of 50,000 that is called revaluation gain. So revaluation gain. Now, what is gain? Actually, there are two words, profit and gain. Profit comes from your operating activities. Profit comes from your operations. Whereas the gain is something which is also benefit to you, but it is not from your operations. So whatever business you do, whatever products or goods or services you give, so whenever you make any economic benefit by, by providing those goods or services, that is called your profit. But if you get any other benefit from other sources, that is called gain. For example, change in you know the currency rates or Forex, you call it, it is gain. The property price goes up, it is a gain. So it is also kind of my benefit, but not from my operations. So I call it revaluation gain. And also remember that it is unrealized gain. Unrealized gains means that it is not yet in my hand. It is still on the paper. I don't have it in my hand. I, can, I don't have it in form of cash. I cannot give it to anyone. It is just on the papers at the moment because the property I'm still using, I have not sold this house or I've not sold this property. So I've got a revaluation gain, which is an unrealized gain and it cannot be distributed and it is 50,000. So this was the requirement number one. So now let's see how to record the revaluation gain. So first, let's see the double entry. It is debit accumulated depreciation, uh, debit non-current asset 20,000 and credit revaluation surplus. So if you see that um, in last six years, we charged 30,000 depreciation and accumulated depreciation balance was 30,000. So we reverse all of that. Before previously we were doing credit accumulated depreciation. Now we do debit accumulated depreciation. Uh, the asset original value was 100,000, fair value is 120,000, the difference is 20,000, you debit it, 
and credit revaluation surplus. Now you can uh, remember it by heart, learn it by heart, what you say, cram it, but I wouldn't suggest. We can remember this debit credit, this double entry, but what is more important that we should understand how this double entry we made, why do we do debit to accumulated depreciation? That's uh, something which we need to understand. Let me show you some, uh, the T accounts, the ledger accounts, and then I will explain you the reason behind this double entry. So let's see the ledger accounts. So we had non-current asset, uh, which is showing 100,000 as cost. And then we have got accumulated depreciation, which shows 30,000 as on the credit side. And this gives us the non-current asset debit minus accumulated depreciation 30,000, the net book value 70,000 is given to us. Now, what has happened? You know, we assumed in the very beginning that the asset is losing value 5,000 every year. So at the end of the first year, we made asset 100,000 to 95,000, then second year 90,000, then third year 85,000. That's how we were decreasing the value of asset because we assumed that asset was losing $5,000 every year. However, in reality, the asset was not losing value. In the market, the asset value was going up. So in your books, you were decreasing the uh, value of asset, whereas in reality, the asset was increasing in value in the market. So it means that your assumption was not correct. It means that the depreciation which you charged in past 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, total 30,000, you charged depreciation, that was not correct. So in your books, you made asset 70,000. Whereas in the market, the asset value was not going down. So that's why what we do that whatever depreciation we charged in the beginning, in the first six years, we reverse it back. We bring it back. We say debit accumulated depreciation. So what we done, whatever mistake we made in past, we rectified that mistake. So after reversing the accumulated depreciation, you push up the asset value from 70,000 to 100,000. Now, if you see that accumulated depreciation ledger balance is zero and non-current asset is 100,000. So the net book value automatically becomes 100,000. And now from 100,000, the asset has only gone up by 20,000. So the asset did not increase in value by 50,000, by the way. Asset only increased in value by 20,000. 30,000 your, was your mistake. 30,000, you brought it down. So first we reverse the accumulated depreciation. It helps us to take the asset to the original position of 100K. And then from 100K, we add 20K and we say now the asset is 20,000. So here we are adding 20,000 to the non-current asset because in reality, the non-current asset only increased by 20,000. And now you've got a net book value of 120,000. So this is the logic behind reversing the accumulated depreciation and then you've got revaluation surplus account which is shown as 50,000 now you should see here that this 50,000 the gain which is you call revaluation gain which is shown in the revaluation surplus account this 50,000 it includes 20,000 which is the real gain and 30,000 is the uh, extra depreciation which we trans which we charged in the past we reversed it back so now we are going to give shareholders 50,000 50,000 we are going to give to shareholders, 20,000 as an increase in the value and 30,000 we are returning back to them what we charged in past. Now, the third question was, which we asked was how much is extra depreciation? Now, if you remember that initially the asset was 100,000 and we were charging depreciation 5,000 per year, 100,000 divided by 20 years, it was 5,000. Now, what has happened that the asset value has changed to 120,000 and the remaining useful life of the asset is 14,000. In this particular question, we did revaluation, but we did not change the life of the asset. By the way, life of the asset can also change. But in this particular example, we assume that the life of the asset remains the same. So out of 20 years, six years have gone, 14 years are remaining. So 120,000 divided by 14, it means 8,571 is the new depreciation. And the difference between these two depreciation is called extra depreciation. So it means that from year one to year six, we were charging an income statement 5,000. From year seven onward, we will start charging depreciation expense as 8,571. And this additional depreciation is called 3571. This is extra hit to our income statement. So it is going to decrease our profitability, by the way, because in revaluation, we, in, we have increased the value of asset, which has um, caused depreciation expense to increase, and therefore the profitability will be affected. So this is just, I explained that the life of the asset and extra depreciation. And number four was, revaluation account at the end of the year. 
So what happens at the beginning of the seventh year, we, uh, we charge 50,000 to revaluation surplus account as a result of that double entry debit accumulated depreciation, debit non-current asset and credit revaluation surplus. So this extra depreciation will be transferred from the revaluation account to the retained earnings account. Now what happens? See, I told you in the beginning that your revaluation surplus account, it is an unrealized gain, therefore we cannot distribute it. This was first thing. Second was that in income statement, we was we started charging depreciation 8,571 and extra depreciation was 3,571. So it means we were charging more depreciation to income statement. This would reduce the profit. And if the profit is reduced, this would also reduce the retained earnings. So shareholders are not really very happy about this revaluation because the revaluation does not give them anything practically. It is just on the paper. However, the profitability decreases because of the extra depreciation and that creates and that creates confusion this is number one point and number two that the question the shareholders they may ask that if there is any revaluation gain when this will be transferred to us or how it will be transferred to us so the answer is when it will be transferred it will be transferred during the useful life of the asset which is 14 years and how it can be transferred because if it remains on revaluation surplus i cannot distribute it so i have to somehow transfer it from revaluation surplus to the retained earnings so that they can take out dividends. So what we did that whatever is extra depreciation 3,571 every year that 3,571 which just came as a result of revaluation this, this amount we take out from the revaluation account and transfer it to the retained earning and from retained earning shareholders can take it as a dividend. So if you multiply 3,571 multiplied by 14 years, it will exactly make, uh, it will exactly make 50,000. So this is the double entry, debit revaluation surplus. Remember, previously we credited revaluation surplus with 50,000. Now we are going to debit it, which means we are going to decrease the revaluation surplus account and we are going to increase the retained earning account. So every year we will take out 3,571 from revaluation and transfer it to uh, retained earning 3571 and and that's how in f in 14 years time your revaluation surplus account will become zero so at the end of the first year beginning of the first year it was 50000 it was 50000 end of the first year we subtract 3571 and the balance will become 46429 so end of the seventh year, it is 46,429. End of the eighth year, it will be further something like 43,000 or 42,000. And in next 14 years, it becomes zero. And slowly and gradually, this 50,000, you will transfer to retained earning and shareholders can take it that.